Hey, welcome to North End Church. We're about to begin in three or four minutes, so get your coffee. This is Father's Day. Get your dad a cup of coffee. You know, you want to put his um, slippers on his feet, give him the paper, give him the cigar, the whole thing, or the pipe. No, maybe we shouldn't go down that road. But you know, it's Father's Day, so I was trying to think, what is important to me as a father? Well, first of all, Before you're married and have kids, you don't really think about Father's Day. So it just kind of took on a whole different twist when I got married. So first thing I discovered as as a dad, and this is how I celebrate Father's Day. Guess what? I'm allowed to wear my shoes in the house. I didn't know when you got married that the new rule was you can't wear your shoes in the house. Like, hello, I was a bachelor. I wore my shoes in the house. Like, (laughs) what's that all about? Uh, The other thing is, if I barbecue today... I get to take the credit for the whole meal. I know a lot of times ladies, they criticize their man because he wants to take the credit when all he's done is turned on the barbecue and thrown a burger on or a steak. Father's Day, I take all the credit, all the glory. And the other thing that I really love about Father's Day is that it's my prerogative to get rid of all the pillows in the house. Like, hello? Before I got married, I had one pillow. Okay, and then I got married, then I became a dad. We have about 17,000 pillows in the house. Why? Why? Well, we're going to solve all those questions and answer more as we celebrate Father's Day. We're going to be right back. Get your coffee, get your family. It's going to be a fantastic morning. Now, welcome to North End Church. Good morning and welcome to North End Church Online. My name is Kathy McKinnon and we're thrilled that you're joining us today. Feel free to say hi in the chat and don't forget to hit the share button to share us on your timeline. Happy Father's Day! Welcome and to all of our dads, thank you for being so great. I pray a special blessing on each one of you today as we celebrate this day together. Thanks for being a mentor and a role model And I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen you as you continue your role as a dad. So no matter where you are in the world today, whether you're here in St. Catharines or across the world, welcome to North End Church, where everybody is welcome, nobody is perfect, and anything is possible.
Hey everyone, Sarah Mesa here, um, part of staff at North End Church. Just want to give everyone a little update on what's been going on at the food pantry. So for the past two months now, we've been serving um, just our community, whether that's the church community or people outside of our church building who have found us either through our website, our sign. We've posted signs up around different um, place, public places in St. Catharines. We now are available on the Niagara Regions website. Um, and so we've been making these um, interactions, these drop-offs now for about two months. So far we've had about 50 orders that have come in, uh, looking people looking for food, families looking for food, which is translated to about 120 people who have been affected by our, um, our food bank, who have used our services. As we continue to grow, it used to be here behind me, but as we continue to grow and adapt to the, the changes of COVID and such, we have moved now downstairs as we kind of uh, get together, which is happening on Monday, uh, if you want to be part of that meeting, to discuss what the future of uh, the food pantry will look like. So if you're interested in joining in on that meeting, just send me a, 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 an email at foodbank at northendchurch.ca or office at northendchurch.ca and we can get you connected to that. Um, but thank you everyone who has been so faithfully giving their finances, giving their food, um, coming weekly to drop groceries off. Uh, I can't tell you how much this encur has encouraged me, it's encouraged our staff, it's encouraged obviously the people that are using it. The thank yous that I get and the gratitude that I'm receiving from people who are using our services is just um, it's quite humbling. And so thank you for seeing the need and being willing to respond. So God bless. Take care. Well, hey, on this Father's Day, we have a lot to think about. Sometimes Father's Day is a little daunting for guys, including myself. We, we want to think about the things where we haven't measured up. We're not going to go that route today. We want to talk to all the dads today. We want to talk to everybody about what it means to be the person that God created us to be. It's going to be an incredible day. On Father's Day, though, I naturally think of my own dad. He's gone to be with Jesus over 10 years ago. And that in itself says something. He was a God follower. He loved Jesus. He passed on so much to me. A lot of serious things, a lot of funny things. Like, pay attention, Mike, to the idiot light on the dash. Only an idiot <laughs> doesn't look at the idiot light. You know, when it's flashing red, pull over and add oil. All sorts of good things I remember my dad for right now but especially all that he modeled to me. Dad modeled to me what family was all about, and I'm forever grateful for that. And today on this Father's Day, I want to take a few moments and introduce you to our church family. Our family of staff, we really are a team. They've been doing an amazing job. You're going to look forward to meeting them right now. Hey, my name is Mike, you all know that. I'm uh, so excited that I have the privilege of being pastor here at North End Church, but also equally excited to introduce to you our staff, because we really are a team. I want you to know they've been going above and beyond the call. Um, ministering through COVID has all sorts of challenges, as I'm sure you can imagine. Everyone's tired of Zoom calls, but you'd never know with our staff. They keep smiling through it all. They're trying to connect with you. Some of them are phoning you. Some of them are doing things with your kids, with your youth, keeping our, our finances in track. And the list goes on and all. They're trying to connect with you. Some of them are phoning you. Some of them are doing things with your kids, with your youth, keeping our, our finances in track. And the list goes on and on, including the guy who's holding the camera right now. you something amazing something amazing something totally crazy that just might work we're here to tell you about wait what did you say i didn't hear you she said summer camp summer, summer camp. camp yes you heard me we're here to bring summer camps to your family this summer wait uh how are we gonna bring summer camps to them to their front door yes we're bringing kids camp 2.0 to your front door this summer four jam-packed weeks full of fun. We have activities, crafts, science experiments, STEM challenges, 
worship songs, games, and Bible exploration sessions where your kids will learn about the unconditional love of Jesus. North End Church and Scott Street Church are joining forces to bring you the most fun-filled, action-packed, summer blast-off adventure at home, take home in a box, camp in a box that you've ever seen this summer. Hey, guess what I have behind my back? What do you have behind your back, Dana? I have a box. A, a box? box? Yes, a box. But this isn't any ordinary box. This is the box that you will receive when you register for Kids Camp 2.0. Our Kids Camp 2.0 box includes all the materials, crafts, supplies, and activities you'll need for a fun experience at home. There's all kinds of craft tutorials, and there'll get fun activities. There'll be worship song videos and a fun Zoom call. Plus, you'll be getting curbside visits that are super duper special from your team leaders this summer. Wow, that sounds super fun. I forget, how long do they have to be for to register? To register for Kids Camp 2.0, you need to be entering grades one through six this fall. At Kids Camp 2.0, we have two exciting themes that we're bringing to you this summer. The first theme is Mission Blast Off, where we will blast off into knowing that God's love is out of this world. And theme B is the Olympics, where we will be champions of God. But remember, there's two weeks of each theme, so you can register your kids for two weeks of camp this summer. Registration is now live on our website, kidscamp.online. And it's open now through July 10th, and registration closes two weeks before each week of camp. Find out more information on North End and Scott Street's Facebook pages. At Kids Camp 2.0, your campers will experience the incredible, unconditional love of Jesus while they make lifelong friendships, have a whole lot of fun, and explore scripture, participate in fun activities, and build long-lasting relationships with their leaders that invest into their lives. But Charles, most importantly, we'll have a lot of fun, right? Right! Right. <laughs> we, we can't wait to meet you this summer online at Kids Camp. Yo amo a mi papá porque él me protege. I love my dad because he protects me. I like my daddy because he lets me box. I love daddy because he lets me watch TV. I love daddy because he bikes ride with me and I have a lot of fun with him. I love my dad because he plays Minecraft with me. Papa, porque eh, me ama. I love I love my dad because he loves me. I love my dad because he plays basketball with me. He plays hockey with me and soccer and catch with me. I also love him because he cares for me by getting groceries, taking care of me when I'm sick, and.
I love Daddy. I love you, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Well, Father's Day wouldn't be Father's Day without children, and I know you enjoyed uh, those remarks from some of the children here at North End Church, so a big shout out to them, and uh, make sure you love on your dads today. And as we continue to think on the whole theme of family, can I say once again, thank you for your faithful support of North End Church. Uh, at this point in the service, we want to encourage you to uh, go online and to give through either e-transfer or through credit card, or you can mail in your gift. But we want to thank you for faithfully supporting the ministry of the church and also our food bank and, and the many things that are happening. So we've spent a lot of time sharing about those things, but I want to continue to give thanks to God for the generosity he has provided to us through your faithfulness. So thank you. Uh, we want to pray together right now. We want to give thanks to God for all that he's doing for us. We also want to remember those who have lost loved ones this week in our church. We also want to be praying for those who are still navigating the, the realities of what this pandemic means. And we want to remember those that are serving on the front lines. So let's join together in prayer right now. Father in heaven, we want to thank you that you care for us. We want to thank you that you love us. And we come with open hands to you and we want to surrender our lives to you. We want to surrender afresh our, our ties and uh, our time, our talent. We struggle with those things some days, God, but I pray that we would fix our eyes on you, realizing that our hope, that all that we have comes from you. You are the source of life. And just as you are the source of life, we pray for those who've lost loved ones this week in the midst of our church family. We think of others who have passed away because of COVID. We think of others who are dealing with uh, just huge obstacles in their life. May they know, may they experience the shelter and the protection of your arms around them. In the scriptures, Lord, it says that you are like a mother hen who just covers and protects her young. And so I pray that you would uh, show your protection, that you would be strong, that you would be faithful to all those who are struggling, those who are trying to hold it together. May they know that you are the one holding them together. And we thank you that as we celebrate all the dads in our midst, those that have gone before, and those that are rising afresh to the challenge, we pray for the men in our church. We pray that they would stand up, that they would be strong, and that lead their families with confidence and with humility and with the strength that you alone can give. We ask today these things in the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, 16-17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. James 1 verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who ge gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. We are made new creations in you. You bring calm to our storm. You pour out your love. What we do, we will honor you. God, please transform our hearts from above. Hallelujah, how holy. Always. 
always provide You always are true We will seek you Call on your name Change our inside
I want to say a special welcome today to all of you at North End Church. And I also want to say a welcome to those of you who are part of our program called Transformation. Some of you are not aware of what's been happening over the last several weeks, but there has been emerging a transformation. So excited to be part of North End Church. It started as a church plant about a year and a half ago. And now, uh, as we are seeing it grow and develop by God's grace, we've incorporated the teaching part of North End Church into what I do in the television program that goes across Canada. And so, to those of you who are watching today, you can always follow us live uh, on stream every week. But we show a week delay, and then we show the program and the teaching part of every Sunday. So that is the connection, and it becomes a, a greater expression of what I do in a local context, but also as we want to reach out to our entire country. So a special welcome to all of you today. And this is made possible through the faithful giving of God's people all across the country. You have stood with me for uh, uh, several years now as we've sought to minister across the country. And I'm also grateful so much for what God is doing here at North End Church. So if you're ever in the area, you're welcome to stop in and you'll feel the embrace of God's love from the amazing church family that we have here at North End Church. On this Father's Day weekend, my mind has been spinning with a number of thoughts. I'm really delighted that we have a special guest today who's not a stranger to North End Church, nor is he a stranger to our television program called Transformation. It's Dr. Andrew Blackwood. And in a couple of moments, Andrew is going to come and share from God's Word uh, a special message for us on this significant weekend. As we prepare our minds for Father's Day, as we prepare our minds for any day, as we think about the context that our world is in right now, we've just been inundated with the whole Black Lives Matter material. It's more than material. It's people standing up and saying, this is what resonates in my heart. It's been an expose on uh, an evil that's been at the root of people's hearts. We've also been dealing with COVID-19. And we're trying to process how do all these things come together? How do we hear God's voice and how do we respond? If there is one word this week, if I mingle Black Lives Matter, if I mingle Father's Day, if I think of COVID-19, I'm thinking that as I walk through all of this, God is calling me as a man to be a person of integrity. Integrity is not something that you wake up and suddenly you have it. I think what my dad taught me, along with many other things, is that integrity is something that you can lose at any moment, but it's something that you feed constantly. It's a choice. The decisions that we make, how we treat people, how we reach out, how we love one another. I find myself going back to scripture constantly for help, for strength, as I navigate this journey called life. And part of that journey is unpacked for me in Psalm 37. This week it has spoke to me many times as what I read right at the top is maybe a message to dads, a message to all of us where the psalmist says, don't fret because of what other people have. In other words, be content with what God has given to you right now, even your particular situation. And then he says this, he says, we need to trust in the Lord. You know, there are so many things I do not have the answer for. And many times people will look to me and say, so how are you going to do that? What are you going to do? And my answer has become simpler and simpler. I'm going to trust in the Lord. My dad taught me that. And that brought him through his entire life. Not only do I have to trust in the Lord, I want to delight in him. I want him to be the focus of my attention. But as the psalmist said in Psalm 37, I need to commit my way to the Lord. And guys, if I could give a word to you, there is so much that you and I can't carry on our own. But God invites us to commit our way to him. And as we commit our way to him, we're going to discover that there is a rest that God wants to give us as we become the people he's created us to be. I'm so delighted that Andrew is coming right now to unpack scripture, to make some of these truths become even more apparent, more alive in your hearts and in mine. Let's listen together. Let's listen as God speaks his word to us today through his servant.
My seven-year-old is a walking, talking collection of sermon illustrations. And, you know, in light of COVID and everything else, you just might meet her today. We'll see. But um, I'm thinking about a moment that we shared just the other day where she asks me for some ice cream, but she wants it in a cone. And I say to her, listen, there are no more coin cones. They're done. And she says, no, they're not. I say, yes, they are. No, they're not. And we go back and forth. Yes, I debate with my seven-year-old daughter. She's just that wonderful. And, you know, she's, as we're debating, she's taking the, the, the tall chair in the kitchen and getting ready to put a stool on top of it so she can climb up to see the cones that she says are not there. And I know they're not there because, number one, I can see the high shelf that she's trying to reach. But number two, I remember giving her the last of the cones just a couple days ago. So I don't want her to fall. I take down the stool and I lift her up so that she can see that I'm right, right? Because I'm not always right, but when I'm right, I want to, you know, I, wa I want to prove the point. So I show her that I'm right. And I say to her, why won't you just listen, child? Why won't you just listen? What will it take for you to trust me? And in that moment, like many other moments, I'm hearing God say, yeah, Andrew, what will it take for you to just trust me? This message is dedicated to all you fathers out there who have children who don't always listen. I know what that's like, but God knows what that's like too. You know, why won't you just listen? Why won't you just listen? That's the topic today. And lest you think that I'm telling you how to listen because I know how to listen, I want to get that corrected. I'm learning how to listen. I've made enough mistakes in the past and enough unwise decisions to know that I don't know how to do this thing well. But I'm learning. I'm learning that listening is not a passive activity. Listen is a, listening is an active, engaging uh, activity that I've been doing with people for 15 years plus, but that I'm learning to do more with God now. So my daughter, she often says, Daddy, you're not listening. Daddy, you're not listening to me. And when she says that, she often means, Daddy, you didn't hear what I said. But she also sometimes means, Daddy, you're not agreeing with me. You're not doing what I want you to do. There's a listening component, a hearing component, but then there's also an active doing component that goes along with listening. And my wife, she also has challenges with me in that arena too. She'll ask me, Andrew, did you hear what I said? <laughs> Because I'm known to multitask sometimes and I'm not the greatest at it. I don't know why. I, do. I guess I'm just persistent. I keep trying and I keep trying, but I miss stuff. And she wants to make sure that I didn't miss it. If she could, she would probably write everything out in just like, you know, so she would never have to repeat herself. Because I know there are many women, people out there listening, just say, I wish I didn't have to repeat myself so much. Um, but who would want to read that? She would feel good about saying, you know, Andrew, Please revisit page 1,000,052-C, where the staple grocery list is there. Don't ask me that again. <laughs> and I'd be like, what? Okay, I don't want to read that. And I think sometimes we approach the Word of God like that too. It's something that we don't want to read. It's so big, it's so long, there's so much stuff in there that seems irrelevant to us and out of touch with reality. Um, but... The scripture tells us that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and teaches us to do what is right. It is God's way of preparing us in every way to be fully equipped for every good thing God wants us to do. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like to be told what to do. 
I don't enjoy correction. I really, really don't. Um, and I think there's a lot of people out there like me who don't like to be told what to do. And especially when it comes to scripture that we don't understand, that we don't necessarily agree with. As we learn to listen with God, I can, I can confirm, I can promise you, we're going to run up into things that we don't want to hear, that we don't understand, that we don't like. But, but this is what we've been given. You see, there's the principles, the laws throughout the word of God, that if we follow them, it will be, will be kept on the straight and narrow, point blank. You know, Psalm chapter one talks about, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, but his, he delights in the law of the Lord. He med meditates on it day and night. That's what we're encouraged to do. And we know that the results of that are wonderful. They're blessings. That's just what happens. But then we run into problems with other scriptures like the one in Romans chapter 13. I don't have that one memorized, probably because I don't like it so much. <laughs> um, but it talks about obeying the government or authority, because God is the one who put it there. All governments have been placed in power by God. In this world and day of anti-Black racism, past and current current days of anti-Semitic racism, prejudices, biases, rules that are unfair and even ungodly. The scripture tells us to obey and I have a problem with that. I don't know about you, do you have a problem with that? I have a problem with that. Many times I have problems with that. A similar kind of situation as I listen to people and children, you know, who've been abused even by people in church, like, how do you obey your father and honor your mother when you know they're not doing some godly things? So what do we do with that? What do I, as a, as, as a coach, as a practitioner, as a psychotherapist, as an imperfect person, what do I do with that? You see, this is what I've found to be true about people. When we come upon situations, um, we have this either fear or freeze or flight kind of situation where we, we don't want to do anything but hide because we're afraid or we want to protect ourselves or we want to avenge ourselves or we want to protect other people. And there are human instinctive reactions. I can't say there's anything wrong with that. It's, it's natural. But what I am learning in this day and time is a difference that listening makes. I'm gonna come at this from a different angle. So I recently learned about hearing, the ears. There's this wonderful, we we're fearfully and wonderfully made, but there's this wonderful thing called the labyrinth, our ears, because they're kind of like a maze on the inside. They have all these parts and tubes and pieces, and they actually compose what's called the the vestibular system, the, the organ that's responsible for balance in our lives, like literally, you know, so we look around and think that because of what we see, right, that's really what helps us to stabilize ourselves. That's what we rely on. But it's the ear that helps us balance. I mean, the, all these parts work together, but the primary responsible organ for balance is our ears. And it's interesting that, you know, the scriptures tell us the just shall live by faith. We walk by, by faith, not by sight. And hearing, and faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So when you put all this together, it prioritizes, the emphasis is on hearing. I'm thinking about the disciples. They're on this boat in the middle of a storm. Jesus is with them and Jesus is sleeping. The storm is real, okay? <laughs> the storm is real. Like many of us, we're in storms right now. We're in a pandemic. We're in the middle of all this racial tension. This is a real storm out there. 
But somehow, Jesus is sleeping. The disciples are looking around. They're afraid that the storm is going to take them out because that's what they're seeing. But when we're still long enough to listen, to really hear what God is saying to us, something interesting happens because I learned that the system in our ears that is designed to stabilize us and it works well with the body, what it does when our hearing is, is, is off, it actually sends messages to the body to readjust itself, to reposition itself, to stabilize itself. And it even affects the eye movement. It adjusts it so that it can take things in and take the right information and give it to the brain when we learn how to listen to God, we see things differently. Listening is not a passive activity. Listening is an opportunity for us to engage with God, to hear, but also to ask, to inquire, to question, to consider, to, to really dig in. That's what it means to meditate. Now, if we're not reading the Word of God on a regular basis, then we're likely not going to be in line to begin with. But when God gives us daily revelation, daily understanding of what we are going to experience and what we are to do, that's our daily bread. That's what we use to adjust what we see. We're not called to ignore injustice. We're not called to disregard ungodly leadership. We can look at many examples in the Bible where believers in God stood for what was right. The three Hebrew boys, they didn't bow. That was a call to worship other gods. They didn't bow. Look at Daniel. He knew he was going to be facing some lions, right? The edict came down. He was required not to worship his God, which was his custom. Did he give in? No, he didn't. Look at Jesus, the life of his parents. They were warned, leave this place because King Herod is gonna to try to kill your son. Did they say, yeah, sure, take him? <laughs> no, they didn't. Jesus himself, he went into the temple where religious leaders, they weren't doing the right thing. He got upset about it, turned over some tables, and maybe even, you know, took some cords to some people, right? Was he wrong to do that? Another example, Jesus himself evaded authorities. When they were looking for him, to question him, to take him in, he disappeared out of the midst, right? So, but then we, face the stuff that we don't really like. Like when he actually did surrender to the authorities, when he actually did lay down his life. He was actually very clear about that. Although they wanted to take him in and they planned to crucify him, he was very clear. No one takes my life. I lay it down. And what's beautiful about that is he had the awareness of the plan of the Father and the power to resurrect his life again, to come back to life again, and he did. In life, sometimes we see ourselves and experience ourselves as powerless. When it's not true, we are not powerless. We belong to a God who loves us, the King who is sovereign. He sees all and he knows all. His way are far beyond our ways, his thoughts far beyond our thoughts, but, but he comes close to us, invites us to reason with him, like he's that good, right? He's the kind of dad who will reason with his kid, even though I may not get it the first time, second time, third time, the hundredth time, the thousandth, whatever. He knows I'm not going to get it, but he still comes to me with his word. As I listen more, I hear the directions of a loving God. 
And that's the challenge for us. The challenge for us is to move beyond, and we can only move beyond when we actually engage with reading the word on a regular basis. But we move beyond the letter of the word to the spirit of the word so that we can hear God speaking to us. Yes, there are checks and balances because sometimes it's difficult to know when God is speaking to you and what he's saying, right? There's safety in the presence of wise counsel, right? It's important to be, identif be able to identify who the wise people are and the safe people are in our lives, right? If they're gossiping, right? If they're unruly, those are the safe people. <laughs> those aren't the people you want to take counsel from. Yes, God can use them too. But if we want to be intentional, we want to look for the people who are seasoned. And chronology is not the same as maturity, right? You can have a young person who is a wise person. You can have somebody who is not so young who still has some maturing to do. But some of the indicators are their openness, Okay, obviously they don't, they, don't, they don't gossip, they don't talk about other people's business, but they're open. They will share their stories, their own failures, but also the deliverance that God has moved them through. Those are indicators of safe people. And in the presence of those people, there is safety. We can bounce things off of them that we hear God saying to us and we wanna just check it out. That's important, really, really important. We don't do this thing called relationship and walking alone. We're not designed to do that. So, you know, I'm, I'm remembering a story of a, a man that I have worked with and I've walked through the system that God just was sharing with me about how to dig into de my devotional life. And we started to talk about that. And I've known that he, like many others, really doubted his own ability to hear God. And while his wife is well-meaning, she often compared him to other spiritual leaders, men, because she was trying to inspire him to grow. And I know that good intentions don't always equal good outcomes. How she was going about it was just really beating him down, causing him to think and feel that he didn't measure up again, because this was a message he heard growing up. And the more I listened to him was the more I was aware that, wow, this guy's really dialed in to what God is saying. When, when he actually listens and he starts to open up, there is so much gifting in this man. And the more we talked and the more he spoke about what he was hearing God say, and we were doing this growth thing together, this leader just emerged and it was wonderful to see because he was able to find his own way. When I say his own way, I mean the unique call that's on his life. He may never get up and preach a sermon, but he has the gift of encouragement. And the way that he goes around and encourages his children and, and listens and, and leads, it's just woven into him. As we listen to what God is saying to us, we hear who he's calling us to be because our purpose is woven into the call. It's woven into who we are as people. And we can only know that when we listen to God. He's our creator. He knows he knows how he's made us. He knows why he's made us. And for this day and this time, and I believe we all have a unique call, a unique opportunity to hear from God and to live out with purpose and passion, conviction and confidence. But that comes from hearing. That comes from listening. That comes from trusting. We can't please God without trusting him. And tr trust is all about, about love. We trust God when we understand that he loves us. And we understand that he loves us as we listen to him and the Holy Spirit kind of turns on the light in certain places in our hearts. The scripture tells us that the love, the light of Christ is shone within our hearts by the Holy Spirit given to us. 
when we connect with him, when we receive that daily bread, he shows us who we are, what we're called to be, what we're called to do. And it gives direction in very difficult times. I think we're living in those times now. And it's important for us to understand what it means to be still, to hear, to listen, to trust, to obey, to live out what he's called us to do and who he's called us to be. It's interesting that we have the opportunity, we have a God-given opportunity to connect with him every single day. And it starts by reading the word. And I know from personal experience that life can be so full. Our focus can be so divided. Other things get prioritized over the word of God time and time again. And then we're left, well, I'll speak for myself. Then I come back to the situation. I'm like, how did I get here again? Why am I here again? And I hear the Spirit of God say, Andrew, you're just not listening. So my encouragement to you is to take the time, make the time to listen, to have those conversations with God by reading the Word, by being grounded in the Word, by learning how to listen and how to hear. In the days to come, I'm going to be putting out this challenge to everyone. It started with a personal challenge for myself about how to do devotions seven days a week. So if you're interested, by all means, reach out to me, Coach Drew Can, on so many different platforms, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, but until now, until then, rather, dig in. I know God is speaking to you. That's not a question in my mind. He's always speaking to us. The question is, are we listening? And the kind of listening that builds faith the kind of listening that will ground us and give us direction and confidence in the call that he has for our lives. Be well. Andrew, thank you so much for sharing your heart with us and opening up God's word. And as Andrew has been talking to us, I want to invite you right now to bow your head with me and just, just to focus in on the love that God has for you and for me. And as we pray together to invite him into the midst of our lives right now, let's do that together. Father, we thank you that you care for us. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. We thank you that you are a God who not only speaks to us, but reveals the incredible majesty of your greatness to each of us in the midst of this journey called life. And so give today, O oh God, the gift of faith to all who are asking you that they might reach out and know the embrace of your love and your forgiveness as they call you their leader and their Lord and their Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.